Wow. I'm still speechless about what happened last night. This may be the most exciting election I've ever watched. To be clear, I'm talking about the election that took place yesterday in British Columbia. What made it so exciting? Well, primarily the fact that even now we don't actually know the final results of the election. The BC Liberals currently appear to have 43 seats, with the NDP sitting at 41 and the Greens tripling their previous seat total, giving them three seats. This alone would mean we're unsure of the final results, since it would give the Liberals a minority government, but the Greens and the NDP having enough seats between them to command control if they were to choose to form a coalition. And while coalition governments are very rare in Canada, in the case of this specific election, I wouldn't say it's out of the question. But there's a few other things that could yet change these results. First, we have the absentee ballots. And with a number of ridings having results where the runner-up is only a few hundred votes behind the winner, or even less, these alone could swing the results. The other is a certain riding which has currently gone to the NDP, the riding of Courtenay Comox. I apologize if I butchered the pronunciation of that. Why this riding? The NDP won it by a whopping 9 votes. Yes, you heard me right. Not 900, not 90, 9 votes. With the result this close, it's actually legally required that this riding's votes be recounted. That, in combination with the absentee votes, in a riding like this with a military base could swing the riding over to the Liberals to give them a weak majority government. And while these factors leaving the results so uncertain is a huge story on its own, the power of the Greens in this election is just as big of a story. As I mentioned before, they currently appear to have the power to form a coalition with either big party and become part of the government, which is the only way either of those parties could form a majority without Courtenay Comox flipping. But this isn't the only way they've held influence. While many Green Party supporters would try to denounce the argument I'm about to make, it's nearly impossible to deny that if the Greens hadn't campaigned so strongly, the NDP may have picked up enough votes in some of those closer ridings to form a solid majority government of their own. And while this did allow the BC Greens to make history in being the first Green Party in North America to win multiple seats in an election, this has come at a heavy risk of keeping Christy Clark in power, and possibly even in a majority position, though that majority would be slim if it happened. But at least no writings went to Conservatives, right? One would ask, especially if they don't know a whole lot about BC politics. But the thing is, the BC Liberals are effectively the Conservative Party of BC, with Michael Chong often referring to them as the small-c conservative government in BC, and their policies tending to be similar to most progressive conservative parties across the country. This means when listening to them, you constantly hear talks of small government, not wanting to strangle businesses with regulations, lower taxes, and of course, questionable environmental policy like pipelines and fracking. And while there's some appeal to some of these ideas, it also tends to mean things like weaker education and healthcare funding, and in BC there's also the growing issue of housing affordability. So by now, I'm sure you can see why I, someone who considers myself to be on the left, isn't too keen on the BC Liberals, who for all intents and purposes are a centre-right party. The NDP and Green platforms looked a lot better on these fronts increasing taxes on corporations and the wealthy, or just reallocating current funds to improve funding for things like education, healthcare, and affordable housing. But to me, the even bigger issue, and the issue that makes me truly dread the idea of BC having to suffer through another four years of Christy Clark, is unfortunately not electoral reform. While that's something I care a lot about, and something that the BC Liberals will likely not be pushing for, there's an even bigger issue that needs to be addressed in BC right now. And that issue is corruption. Apparently in BC, there's no ban on corporate and union donations to politicians, political parties, or political campaigns. This is a big problem, especially when it means governments like Clark's give preferential treatment to their donors through things like tax cuts and contracts for government projects. And no, I'm not kidding about that. There will be a huge list of examples in an article linked in the description box, but just to name a couple, Kinder Morgan has donated over $700,000 to the BC Liberals. And yes, that is the same Kinder Morgan responsible for that awful pipeline project. Thank you for noticing. Another example is Ecotech's Healthcare Linen Service, which gained a 20-year government contract for its $115,000 in BC Liberal donations since 2005. This is blatant, disgusting pay-to-play corruption. We can see the donations, and we can see their effects. 
Clearly, BC needs to put in place a ban on these sorts of donations. But can a government that has constantly been taking them since it took office be trusted to do that? Oh yeah, totally. I mean, that's why big money donations are banned in US politics after Obama, right? Yeah, no. While it's truly impressive to see the Greens make the gains they did, and to see the NDP the strongest it's been in BC in a while, it's very concerning to me that the BC Liberals managed to still win the most seats in this election, even after this blatant corruption has been exposed, and that's ignoring all of the other scandals of this government, which are conveniently outlined in the NDP highlight platform, which I will link in the description. And if that seat in Courtenay Comox flips, it will likely give this horrible corrupt government the mandate to continue these practices for another four years. This is not okay. British Columbia deserves better. But the votes are in, and it's all up to the absentee voters now. I'll definitely be revisiting this topic once there's a concrete answer as to which party or parties will be forming government. Here's hoping for the best, with corrupt Christie's liberals not being a part of that government.